Hey guys, Brad and I are out here in Lele for the first time. Actually, his second landing today here in Lele. It's a 10% slope, so it's actually a pretty decent sized slope and it's pretty slippery today. We're just unloading now. We're gonna walk down real quick, take a look at see where he landed, see where he was thinking he was landing and get out of here on our bay way back to Hoskins on a 30 minute flight. Well, we're down here just looking to see where Brad's landed. This little walking trail right here is just a nice visual cue for us. That was what we're aiming for. So we would take the touchdown like pretty much here or just a little bit past that. First one did awesome. Second one, we had a little bit of a downdraft, so we landed a little bit shorter than what we were planning on. But sometimes you just can't catch them. You don't, <laughs> you don't see the downdraft coming. We got six knots of tailwind coming in here. But I mean, if you look up right here, up at the end of the runway, all you can see is just a tiny bit of the vertical stabilizer sticking above. So that just kind of gives you an idea of just how steep this hill is. The video is just not going to give it, but um, yeah, we're going to be tired by the time we get up there. We're going to have probably about a six knot headwind for takeoff. We've got quite a few clouds and rain on our direct track. So we're going to go a little bit longer way back. I'll explain that once we get up in the air, but let's get out of here. Go, go. All right, guys, we're out here on the islands today. I'm gonna turn all this stuff off so you guys can see a little bit better where we are. There we go. All right, guys, so we're here on the islands. I'm just gonna meet myself, Brad, while you get up to the top. That's good. Hey, it's out here in West New Britain. Actually, this is East New Britain because it's just split down the island on different provinces and stuff. But it's a 30 minute flight back to Hoskins. And there's a volcano right here and a lot of rain all right here. As we 5565 November Tango Echo Taxi. So our plan is to actually bring our string over here and go around that volcano just so we can miss all that rain. It's just basically straight ahead of us, but it's beautiful weather all the way around there and all the way back to Hoskins. So it should be no dramas on the way back. All station is Lele, one, two, seven, that's one, one, Kodiak, November Tango Echo is taxiing for takeoff, runway one, two, all station is Lele. This is Brad's second takeoff out of here ever. Um, we're empty today. We just dropped off a bunch of stuff. And we've got a six knot headwind taking off out of here, so we should be airborne by where we just stopped. I'm going right center line. It's going to automatically pull me a little bit to the left anyway. I think I can get on center line and hold it. What are your thoughts? Do you think I should go ahead and reline up? I, this, this will be fine for this location. Okay. I do the same thing, and I just try to get over there as soon as I can and then get on. Because we're empty, if I was full up and if it was maybe softer, then I might reevaluate. But because we're empty, it doesn't matter where we're going to. We're going to take off no matter what. Okay. You're recording. All right, we'll use that same port point. We had airspeed alive. About three quarters of the way to that bush. If we don't have that full reverse max braking flaps up. Loss after takeoff, pitch for 85. Power idle, consider EPL, consider feather, cut off, pull off, turn off. E2, flaps are 85 and then 80, crack our doors, fast drop before touchdown. Okay, airspeed's alive. Continuing. Off nicely with a eight knot headwind, huh? Yeah. Glad we were able to get in before we had that. Well, I imagine there's quite a bit of rain behind us, which is the typical way we're going to go. Today we're just going to go head back out to the coast because pretty much in PNG, anytime you can get to the coast, the weather is good. We've got a big volcano here, another big volcano here. This one is, uh, it was pretty active in 2018. It actually erupted 
all the way up to like 60,000 feet. It was huge and it actually shut down Hoskins Airport for a while. Yeah, you can see there's a bunch of dark stuff underneath all these clouds, so if you can get out to the ocean, you're pretty much golden, and it's going to be a nice flight all the way back into Hoskins. You guys are a flight simmer. You guys want to try flying this exact same route from Lele back to Hoskins. I think this is available for not only X-Plane, but I'm pretty sure it's available for Microsoft Flight Sim. I'll put all these things on my Patreon page where you guys can follow along with the actual charts and kind of follow along with the video as well if you guys are into that kind of stuff. So. I know a bunch of you guys are flight simmers. As we were speaking earlier about coming in here, because this this basically basin right here kind of goes all the way out to the ocean, being able to come in really low works really well because it's like sea level and there's really nothing here that, if there's no mountains or there's no alleys or anything that just, just goes straight out to the ocean. So okay. if you can get low down on the ground, even like 1,500 feet or so, like 95 times out of 100, you can make it in that way. Okay. Awesome. So you just go around this first one, and then you've got all kinds of space. Yeah. It is pretty typical that this little section here has rain and just kind of thunderstorms and just built up clouds. Okay. Just because I think it's just too tight of an area between two big mountains. First speed 5565, never Mateco Echo, departure. Yeah, no particular anyway, echo. Reading your strength two. Uh, we've departed Lele, time two zero. Tracking two five zero. Climbing emitted eight thousand. Estimating Hoskins, time four six. Yeah, more speed five five six five. Never particular anyway, echo. Unreadable. We'll call again at Hoskins. Call again eight eight six one. Call again, 8861, November Tango Echo. Morsby, 8861, November Tango Echo. This is why I wasn't using it earlier. Who got? Yeah, Morsby, 5565, November Tango Echo, no joy, 8861. So how did you feel like that takeoff went, even as opposed to the first takeoff? Uh... <laughs> I, I was wishing my nose was a little straighter whenever I released the brakes. It was a lot harder to get it straight than I thought it was going to be. I was actually dragging the brake a little bit to get it going. Yeah. And anyway, so that was that was a good experience, I guess. Remember to like let off your feet and see what the rudders look like before you yeah. release the brakes. Yeah. Which I I knew it was pointing a little bit to the left, but I knew I wanted to go to the left. Yeah. So I thought it was just going to help me, but. It sure did. Pulled you a little bit more than you thought. Yeah, it just pulled me a lot more. And, I don't know. About the rest of it, how did you feel like like the pitch was and center line control or maybe even just your situational awareness of what was going on? I felt like I was, my mind was processing slower than the airplane was moving that time. <laughs> it is in the afternoon. To that's that's now, very true. So that, that has affected me, but... I feel like it, it went okay in spite of that. I would agree. I thought, yeah, definitely a good learning experience just for the, um, like, we're empty, so it really wasn't that big of an issue. But if we were full up at our maximum, you know, penalty takeoff for that area, and you're dragging your toes on the brakes, like, yeah. then it just, then it really starts making you feel more uncomfortable the further yeah. you go down the runway. We got our airspeed up really quickly, so I, that wasn't a problem. We are empty. We're empty. Yep. But, anyway, so that, that wasn't, I thought the pitch was good. Issue. I felt like we were accelerating well, um, and I didn't feel like it was just sitting there banging, because it is a pretty rough runway. Okay. I felt like that was pretty smooth. I thought your center line control was better on the second one. Okay. I thought the first one, you kind of drifted off a little bit to the left, kind of right as we were rotating kind of thing, or maybe in the rotation. But I felt like this one was just a little bit more, but... Look how much more this has built up. Remember how there was one one over there, and um, nothing else was, and now it's like built as high as you could see. It's crazy, yeah. It really is. It was starting to build right over here, but it wasn't anything like this. Oh, uh, it's crazy how in the afternoons, specifically here in the islands, it just like, you want to be done flying by two if you have to cross the island at all. If you guys are wondering, oh man, looks like you guys are going over ocean, and you don't have light vests. We do have them, they're just right behind us. We just aren't wearing them today because it's 
a billion degrees out right now. How quick are we going down? One thing to keep in mind is do you want to like expose yourself over the water the least amount? So okay. for me, I would probably do it at a higher descent rate just so that we're not exposing ourselves. Okay. Because we don't have anybody on board at all. So we can go down as fast as we want. Just something to keep in mind as we are doing this specific route. Yeah, but what were you saying though a minute ago? What have, what have they said that's been helpful? Has it been like aircraft handling or procedures, or regulations? Actually, I would say probably the most helpful actually is just, um, I mean, I have been taught like pitch first, speed power of altitude when you're obviously doing your, your approach, right? Um, but in this plane, I don't really feel like we're necessarily, how would they, how do you say it? It's like behind the curve or whatever. Like we're still flying them at 1.3. We're just flying at 1.3, depending on if we're empty or we're full, but we're still 1.3 to VSO. So, me converting how I fly my approaches to be uh, pitch for my glide slope and power for my airspeed has actually made, I still got the exact same results, but it's made the approaches easier to do because now I'm adjusting one thing as opposed to two things. Because now, before, it was like pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. Now, if you're flying like a, like a little carbon cub, and you're like hanging out on the prop as you come in, yes, 100%, add power to get yourself some altitude. But we're not really doing that in this, so transition to that has made my approaches so much um, smoother, um, because before, I would turn final, and I would pitch to start slowing down, and then I would have to, I'd have to basically change two things. I'd be pitching for my airspeed, but then I'd have to be also maybe reducing power because now I'm gonna be climbing, as opposed to I'm just pitching for my spot there, Vertical and track. now I'm only adjusting my speed with my power. I still got the exact same results, but I have found it to actually be easier. So I would say that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned from, from comments. Nice. Yeah. Watched a video on YouTube about a year, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago or something, where these guys were out off the California coast getting photos, but they didn't have any life vests or anything with them. Engine stopped. He was only like three miles off the coast, but it was out of his gliding distance. Oh, man. And they landed in the water. And he, anyway, they were out there for like, I want to say only like 45 minutes. Wow. Um, before the Coast Guard was able to fly out there and pick him up. But, um, I mean, the guy was almost like hypothermic at that point even, just off, oh, of, hey. off the coast of California. Wow. So that's why I try to expose myself the least of <laughs> the least amount over the water, even though we do have our, our flotation devices today, but. All stations, Hoskins, 127 one Kodiak, Nova for Tango Echo is one zero miles to the east, 4,400 on descent, estimating circuit time of four five, Hoskins. You can smell the volcano sulfur today. Either that or you farted. It wasn't me. <laughs> I read the placards. That's right. Brad's planning on probably just coming in and entering into a right down one for runway 30. He's already done half of his checklist up here. That's what these are, is they're just checklist, takeoff and landing checklist. Covers all of your required and critical items for takeoff and landing. I've got them on my website if you guys are interested, if you're a sim or if you're a pilot yourself. Got them for 152, 172s, got them for just standard piston airplanes that I could use all the way up to like a multi-engine, and then also a turbine one. Force B, 127 decimal one, number Echo. You could try landing and see if you can stop before, because we're empty, stop okay. before the first taxiway on landing on runway one, two. That's always a fun challenge. We'll see if they can get off the runway in time. If they're still there. You might have a little bit of a tailwind, so that will probably be a little bit harder for you, but that's still fun nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the smoke is blowing, so you'll probably have like a five or six knot tailwind. Orange B, one, two, seven, that's more one, November Tango Echo. See if you can land just past the threshold line. Like right before the numbers even? Yep, just right on the threshold on the, on the oh, keyboard. I see, I see. Yeah. We're empty, but we've still got 400 pounds. What's our weight? 5100, so 61 knots. 
All stations, Hoskins, 127S41, Kodiak, number Tango Echo is left downwind, runway 12. All stations, Hoskins. Frisbee 5565, number Protego Echo in the circuit, Hoskins, cancel SAR. Right, he's got a six knot tailwind that's going to really push him in there pretty quick. So he's probably going to have to like bring his spot back so that he can you know, basically just be pushed in. Now it's five knot tailwind. Looks like he's making the right correction. It's nice. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Way past the taxiway. I used to have like a five knot tailwind, I think, on touchdown, so. Hey guys, well, welcome here to Hoskins. This is our last spot of the day. It's just about 3 p.m. Consider subscribing if this is the kind of content you guys enjoy watching. And thanks again for taking the time to watch. See you guys next time.